Shepherd. Um, I want just want to. I'm Pastor Carol. Pastor Nicole. I'm in the corner over there, and I just want to give a special thank you to Pastor Nicole for coordinating this evening's service, and a thank you again to all of our readers. At this time, I would like to ask you to silence your phones, as we must remember that tonight is a very solemn time of mourning and reflection. We gather this evening to mourn the fact that Jesus Christ had to die for our sins. We gather to remember Jesus on that cross, to remember all the prophecies that Jesus 
fulfilled. To remember Jesus taking on flesh and humanity. To remember Jesus' crucifixion. To remember that Jesus and Jesus alone offers us eternal life. At the conclusion of tonight's service, we will be stripping the altar and then we will leave the building in total silence, mourning Jesus' death while also remembering that Sunday is coming. I pray that you will either join us here at Good Shepherd or at your home church for the Easter Resurrection Celebration. At this time, we'll start our service with our call to worship. It is found in your bulletin. If you're comfortable and able, please rise. I'll read the light part. You'll respond with the bold. God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. Our first song will be the old rugged cross. It is found in your hymnal, number 504. <laughs>
This day, O oh God, we gather in sincere worship to remember Christ's journey to Calvary and his death on the cross. And as we walk through this act of compassion, draw us closer to you, shape us and mold us that we might grow in our compassion towards others, that as individuals and as a community of faith, we would grow up in our courage to be more like Christ. Help us to be more loving, more forgiving, more compassionate, and more willing to do your will. Breathe on us, Lord, and speak to our hearts. In Christ we pray. Amen. If you're able to please remain standing as we sing our last, our next hymn, The Lamb of God, it's found in the faith we sing. It's the small black hymnals, number 2113. 2113. <laughs> <laughs>
Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest slave and cut off his hot right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into your sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of, of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expe expedient that one man should die for the people. had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered them, I 
I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Verse 2. Jews? 
they cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Verse 3. <laughs> Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of the preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answers, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews. But this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Verse 4.
Jesus had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus are his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Verse 5. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, 
and in the garden, a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Go in peace.